And now to our lab. Ouch! For some amazing body experiments. Oh! Just don't try anything you see here at home. Today, it's your friends and mine, body bacteria. Zand, you stink. I know. I haven't washed in three days. What? But why would you do that? Well, Chris, while you have been washing as normal, I haven't. And that's so I could collect samples of the bacteria on my body. And here they are. All over your body, you have lots of lovely bacteria working hard to keep you healthy. That's right, not all bacteria are bad. In fact, lots of them are good. They do things like eat dead skin cells and destroy bad bacteria, which could otherwise cause you infections. But that's not a reason for never washing, is it, Amazon? Well, that's true, but I've only not washed for three days, and you're about to find out why. Allow me to introduce my body bacteria. Meet the family. There's John, and he's off to see Anita, who's over there. Uh, hello, Anita. What, how do you even know their names? We live together. They actually feed off my sweat, and as they gobble away, they release a nasty stink. So when I don't wash, more sweat equals more nasty smells. Now, speaking of smells... Smell this cheese. Cheesy. What are you doing now? Smell my foot. Oh, it's even more cheesy. Exactly. Now, that's because some of the bacteria that live on your body are exactly the same kind of bacteria that are used to make cheese. Bacteria are a key part of producing cheese and actually give each variety of cheese its unique smell and flavour. Now, in these three jars, we have bacteria on swabs that Zahn's been collecting from different parts of his body. Now, we're going to make three varieties of cheese. One from my toe bacteria, one from my armpit bacteria, and one from my belly button bacteria. And what we want to know is, will the different kinds of cheese smell like the body part they came from? Actually, I'm quite peckish. I'm quite looking forward to this. What's on? You can't eat this cheese. We have no idea what sort of foul bacteria might be lurking in the crevices of your body, and some of them could be dangerous. <sighs> I suppose you're right. Now, don't worry. The bacteria used in the cheese you eat is perfectly safe. Let's get cheese making. And the most important ingredient for my body cheese is my unique body bacteria. Get in there and start making cheese. Because the mix of bacteria on my body is unique to me, my cheese should smell like my body and nobody else's. Like all cheese, Zahn's body cheese takes a while to turn solid. Ta-da! Well, here we have it. Operation Ouch, Zahn brand cheese. Let's see if Chris can guess which part of my body each cheese came from. Now, I'm going to let you in on which one's which, though. Are you ready? Chris can't see what you're reading on the screen right now. Number one, belly button cheese. Number two is armpit cheese. And number three is toe cheese. OK, Chris, let your nose be your guide. Right, number one. Ugh! That's the nastiest cheese I've ever smelled. OK, let's have a go at number two. It's less strong, that. I think that might be belly button. Do you want a little go? Ugh! OK, number three. Ugh! That is horrendous! That was definitely the strongest, which makes me think three is foot, two is belly button, and one is armpit. Well, Chris, it's the moment of truth. You said number one was armpit. Are you feeling confident? Yes. Oh, number one, Chris, was belly button cheese. How can your belly button smell that bad and so strong? You said number two was belly button. Oh, it's armpits. Finally, you said number three was toe. And for the most powerful, smelliest, footiest cheese, he did get it exactly right. And this is the one you're most confident about. The toe cheese. It was overwhelmingly smelly and smelled exactly like your toes. Well, Chris did get the cheesiest one right, my toe cheese. So, we all have amazing bacteria on our bodies and some of it is similar to the bacteria used to make cheese. But this isn't how real cheese is made. Unlike Zahn's brand, the cheese you buy to eat is perfectly safe. So we really can't eat my cheese then? Not even a tiny bit? No, Zahn, I've told you, no eating. Anyway, it's time to go. Come on. Zahn! Shh. 
Don't tell Chris. I mean, how dangerous can cheese really be? This is going to be delicious. What? It's all gone. Monty! <laughs> We've got some incredible body tricks for you to show your friends. Now, the next one might get you all feeling a little sleepy. We're conducting a little experiment. We're going to yawn. And just look what happens. That's one. Two. She's trying not to. Oh, he's yawning again. Four, five. Got you. Six, seven, eight, triple whammy. Are you yawning at home? It's a yawnorama. Is this boring? Hands up if you yawned. Me. So when we yawned, they yawned. Who thinks they've got a good explanation about why they yawned? I think yawning is um, a contagious disease because when one person does it, another person does it, then another person does it, and it just keeps on going. It's a good theory, Giuliano. We see someone looking tired and we think, I must be tired because they look tired. Another good theory, Charlie. So we've got all sorts of different explanations. And the really disappointing thing is that scientists and doctors don't know why we yawn. How about that? Look at that really cheated. Like, what? what? Well, it's true. The human body's an amazing thing, but sometimes doctors like us just don't know why things happen. Some experts think that yawning may have developed as a means of communication, telling everyone that you're tired, just like Charlie suggested. Or some think that when you're bored or tired, a big yawn will help you take in more oxygen, keeping you alert and awake. Whatever the reason, make sure you try this out on your mates. But don't do it when you're in class. You might get in trouble. <laughs>